If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. So in this episode of Mind Pump, we really try to answer the question uh, that people tend to ask us all the time, which is, what's the best workout program for me? Now, whenever somebody asks us that question, we can never answer that question right away because we need to know more. We need to know things that will give us the right information to point these people in the right direction because the best workout for you may be a terrible workout for somebody else. The best workout for you is based off of the information that we like to collect from people. Now, here's a few things that we talk about in this episode. We talk about your level of experience and why that's a factor and what that'll direct you to. We talk about activity levels, your goals. We get real specific with goals. We talk about your mobility and aches and pains. We talk about the amount of time you can dedicate to working out in terms of during the workout. We talk about compliance, motivation levels, enjoyment. Um, do you enjoy what you're what you're doing? And then we talk about equipment access, your access to equipment. And then we get into resistance training, full body routines versus split routines, rep ranges, and exercises. So if you listen to this program, this episode, you should have a good idea of what the best workout is going to look like for you. Now, if you're confused at the end of this or you're still not sure, and this is the first time we're doing this, we will answer those questions for you. We have a an email that you can email and you can ask these questions and our people will get back to you and try and help you out. And this is programs at mindpumpmedia.com. So just go there if you have questions. But we think this episode answers most of those questions. Um, also, this month, I do want to remind everybody, Maps Prime and Maps Prime Pro are 50% off. This is the first time we've ever put those programs on sale this way. Now, Maps Prime teaches you how to design your own individualized a warm-up priming session before you work out. And it makes a huge difference. The way you prime your body for your workout makes all the difference in the world. It helps set up better recruitment patterns, activate the muscles you want to activate, helps you sculpt your body in more effective ways. And it really doesn't matter what your workout is. If you prime better for whatever that workout is, that workout is more effective. Now, Mass Prime Pro, that's our correctional exercise program. It helps teach you correctional exercises for all the major joints of your body so you can alleviate pain, avoid injury, get better mobility. Both of them are 50% off. Here's what you do to get the discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code PRIME50, P-R-I-M-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. I've got one for you guys today. Oh, I see the reversal. <laughs> I had it. <laughs> I came up with this idea. I didn't realize. I didn't realize when I open episodes, I do that yeah. because I'm just trying to start the episode. Yeah. So the last episode, you're like, "Nice idea." Like, oh yeah. Well. <laughs> I'm just, this just normal the now. We just well, yeah, that's well. yeah. That's been the running joke since the beginning. It was yeah, great. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's so what's great. your idea? <laughs> So I, I actually want to go over, because th this is something that, uh, I, this will be a valuable episode. Hopefully this is something too on the back end that uh, Anne can use on the customer service side too, because this is probably one of the most common questions that she fields and is always reaching back out to us. And then we have to write an email to explain this to people. Uh, and that is like, how do you choose the best workout program for you? Or how do you choose the best workout? Like what workout is best for you? And, you know, it's not a, a short generic answer. So I, I think we should get into how somebody goes about figuring that out for themselves. What's going to work yeah. for them. Right. And th this is not, uh, I don't think we should talk about how to design your workout for yourself because that's, uh, that can be very, very complicated. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad written programs out there. There were some decent ones that are written well. And so what we're going to try and do is kind of direct people in the right direction because- it is kind of confusing. Like if you're just getting into fitness or you've been working out for a while, you want to get your body to progress or to respond again, you're thinking, okay, what program, what kind of plan should I follow? What's going to work best for me? Because here's mm -hmm. the deal with workout programs. They can be extremely effective if they're applied to the right person. That same workout can be not effective at all mm -hmm. to the wrong person or worse, create injury or cause them to actually regress in their progress to go backwards. So to that point, I want to go through like the, like when we get this question, there's like a series of things that I ask the person before I just tell them what they should be doing. Totally. And the first thing that comes to mind that I always ask is, 
you know, what is your current experience and what are you doing now? Yes. So I can get an idea if this is somebody who has been training for 10 years or I have somebody who's a, a complete beginner, has never worked out before, or somebody maybe who's worked out and then fallen off for two or three months. And, you know, depending on your answer is I'm going to say something different back to you because it's really where you start is really important to how you see progression going forward. Completely. The Think of your, remember your workout, we've said this so many times on the show, I'll, I'll make this point again. Your workout is what sends the signal to your body to adapt uh, and to change. So that's the stimulus, okay? So think of that as your dose. The right dose is what you're looking for because the wrong dose will get your body to progress slower, not progress at all, or potentially cause injury or cause you to regress. So it's all about the right dose. And one of the biggest things you have to consider for yourself is – your experience, current level of fitness. You yeah. have to consider that because- You have to be super honest about this. And I think that this is one of those things that I don't think a lot of people realize that you have a sort of perception about yourself and what you've been doing that may not be as accurate once you start really paying attention and writing it down and, and really assessing uh, your current status, like how much activity are you really getting in every day. Right. Yeah, experience and activity level go kind of hand in hand, right? Because right, right. I would consider myself- high experience, but my activity level could be changing. And that's sure. such a good point. And where I start would be different. So it's so because just, why? Because experience means you know exercises, you know how to do them right. You right. Know, You're educated. But you just don't have the current fitness level that you would that somebody who's super, super active right now would right. have. Right. So just because I'm somebody who 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 may think they're experienced or consider themselves as an advanced lifter because I've been doing it for a long time and understand exercise doesn't mean that I necessarily go to an advanced program that I start with. Because if I've just come off a two or three month stint where I've been, you know, not training at all, or like similar situation that I had been in the last few months before Max came along, you know, I really was inconsistent with my lifting. I was training sporadically. I was doing more swimming than I was lifting weights. And so, you know, it would be a terrible idea for me to jump into a advanced routine, say like MAPS PED. I mean, the amount of volume that is in that and the, the amount of training that is, it just, can I do it? Of course I could do it, but it would be silly for me to do it. It would be way too much, perfect, too fast. Perfect. So we could kind of break this down then into two general uh, people on, the, on this particular topic. Lots of experience, but not good current fitness level. So I haven't been working out for a while, but I know what I've do what mm. I'm doing generally because I've been I worked out in the past. There's a history long time. there. Yeah. Or neither. I don't have a lot of experience, and I'm not. Uh, I haven't you know worked out, or I'm not working out obviously. Or I have both. I'm very experienced, and I'm currently very active and very fit. So there's kind of three directions you can look at because somebody who's coming into trying to figure out a workout for themselves who is both neither experience and low fitness level, there's going to be an element of teaching in there. There's going to be an element of learning movements and learning patterns and learning exercises. For someone who's experienced, even if they're out of shape at the moment, they don't necessarily have to go in and relearn the exercises the same way. Now, they will have to develop good recruitment patterns. Mm. They will have to get their body to move well again. But because they remember what a what good form is like, they remember what the exercise is supposed to feel like and what it, you know what it looks like, is a much shorter learning curve, but that's got to be the biggest one, right? Because here's a, here's an analogy that I, I like to use. If if we're if we're thinking of adaptation, um, there's there's many different ways the body adapts to stress. One of them being, and this is a very easy one, is is your skin's ability to tan when you're exposed to the sun. This is something I've used many times as as an analogy. If you're pale because you haven't been out in the sun at law at all recently. It doesn't take much sunlight to cause your skin to start to darken. And in fact, it doesn't take much sunlight at all to do too much to cause your skin to burn. And what happens when you get a sunburn is you actually lose your ability to adapt. Your skin uh, isn't able to tan effectively or quickly because you're just burning your skin. This is what can happen with the over-application of intensity or too many exercises, too much volume, if you're a beginner or if your body is not fit. Um, and here's this is Adam's favorite uh, line is use the the least amount of uh, effort to give the max amount of results. So if you're going into this as a total beginner, uh, two days a week is a great place to start. You could do a lot 
with two days a week if you're just getting started. Right, right. In fact, this is when Doug came to me as a client. He had lots of experience. He did, he did At the moment when he hired me, he wasn't super active, but he had lots of exercise experience. I trained him two days a week. And we stayed two days a week for a year, and then we moved up to three days a week after that. And his progress was phenomenal. Um, I have pictures I could show you of his before and after. It's funny. This is an area that I think that people mess up all the time because for some reason we – we equate the the harder that we try or the harder the effort or the more effort that we put into the workout that the more results that we're going to get and it's it's absolutely not true at all and so and and in fitness we we have this motivation hype that we see everywhere so it feeds into that it's the reason why for so long on this podcast I've talked a lot of shit about the motivational hype and the beast mode and the and calling this up because I know that it promotes this culture it promotes this you know, oh, you've been lazy sitting on the couch eating Doritos. You haven't been doing anything. It's time to change your life. Get in here. We're going to fire you up, crank the music up, pump you up, and get after it, and get a sweat, get a burn. It's like, wait a second. That person who hasn't been doing any ex- absolutely does not need that whatsoever. Them coming to the gym is already good. <laughs> you know, mm. Them getting the gym and starting to make moves is going to actually make their body change. It's mm-hmm. amazing. It's a beautiful thing because just to your point, Sal, like it's just like never being in the sun, then all of a sudden getting 10 minutes of exposure. 10 minutes of exposure will begin the process. It's perfect. It, it will begin to start to make the body adapt and change. And that's what you want is you want to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. That should always be the goal. It should not be how hard, unless... Your goal is just to be good at working out, like, and or if you're a sports performance person, like, then you want resiliency and you want to build your gas tank. Like, but that's, you still have to train appropriately, right? Mm. But th- that's the only time does that even come somewhat make sense to be applying intensity that mm. way. Otherwise, the goal, if it's for changing the physique, which most people listening here are trying to change their body, whether mm. it be build muscle or lose body fat, that's what most people are looking to do. If that's the goal then you actually want to be putting out just enough effort right. to change the body. That way you can add a little bit more week over week. Otherwise, you throw all the, everything in the kitchen sink at it at the beginning, and sure, you see great results for a couple weeks, but then the body plateaus hard, and then you have nowhere to go. So the way you start and what program you choose or how much volume or how many times you're training at the very beginning – is extremely important to your results. Well, hopefully this doesn't take us too far off course, but you, you mentioned starting. And so for me, I I want to dive in a little bit more to see how serious this person is to want to learn and like what kind of a student they are going into this. Because, and I make that point only because there's a very clear way to approach this, to have uh, a more successful, a more smart, uh, you know, uh, like you could learn, you could go really far with this in terms of like setting your body up like the ultimate way versus just going for that sort of surface goal where I do want, just want to lose some weight. I just want to have like these certain goals, but I want to set myself up so I never have to, well, I'll always have this wisdom to pull from going from here on out. I think think that comes from the experience you get through being consistent. And, And here's an important point too. You want to make the variables that you manipulate with your workouts start out very general. If you're a relative beginner, now, if you're experienced and advanced and you're very fit, now we're manipulating all kinds of different variables to get your body to respond and change. But if you're new, just going in and practicing your basic exercises and moving, you don't have to worry so much about rest periods, you know, uh, messing with rep tempos, messing with the strength curve, you know, changing the variety of the exercises right, in the chains, right way. Chains, bands, all the tools. That, right. None of that applies to you. All you're going to do is go in and do some very basic movements to learn how to move better uh, with your foundational kind of movements, your squatting, your pressing, your rowing, your overhead pressing, your body's ability to twist, your split stance type exercises like your lunges. You're just going to go to the gym and you're going to practice these things and do them well. So if you're a beginner, especially one with that with little experience, in other words, your, your, your low experience and low activity level and you're moving in and you're looking at your routine it should not have 50 different exercises on it. It should not have crazy amounts of variables. It should be very basic, very clean, very clear. You go into the gym and you're doing anywhere between six to eight exercises at the most uh, for your workout. And they're very basic and things you can focus on practicing 
and perfecting. Something else that's really important, and it's kind of moving in the direction of what, what Justin was alluding to that I think is really important, and, and I feel a lot of people miss the mark, is really understanding their own goals. And that sounds kind of weird, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I know what my goals is. I want to look this way or I want to do this. But a lot of times clients would give me their goals and they would give out a list of things that they want to accomplish. But, but what they don't understand is that some of the things that they're saying are kind of conflicting each other. Meaning like, oh, I want to be able to run a marathon, but Adam also want to build 15 pounds of muscle with you. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, we could do both of those. Okay. It's not that we can't do that, but understanding programming in that if I design a program designed to build 15 pounds of muscle the fastest we can to get there, which because everybody wants that, right? Nobody wants to, whatever goal they give you, they don't want to say, they want it tomorrow. Yeah. They want to, they want to, they want to achieve the goal as fast as possible. Because that's the next lead up question that I get after we talk about goals is how long, Adam, till you can get me to this point. Mm. So if your goal, if you have a goal and you want to get there as quickly and efficiently as possible, and you give me multiple goals that are conflicting, there's got to be some sort of a give and understanding in, in how you create or what kind of program you follow. Like if your goal is to build, you know, your main goal is to build 15 pounds of muscle, but you also like one day would like to run a triathlon or something. Okay, well, that's great. The triathlon thing's on the back burner. The main way we're going to train is to build muscle. That's the main focus. Because if your main focus is a triathlon, then it's going to be really tough for us to also build 15 pounds of muscle at the same time. Does that make sense? Right, right. The other yeah. thing too, and to just take a step back, is oftentimes people are not specific with their goal. How often do you get the answer, you know, you know, what are your fitness goals? And the person says, I want to get in better shape. Okay, well, what does that mean? Now, why is it important? Why is it important for a person to become specific with their goals? Well, you got to paint the picture. You have to paint the picture and set your target. What do you want to accomplish with your fitness? I want to lose 15 pounds. Okay, let's get more specific. What parts of your body do you want to shape and sculpt? How do you want to feel at this new body weight? Do you want to be weaker with less energy? Do you want to be stronger? Do you want to have more energy? How do you want to eat when you're at this goal? This is another important one to, to think about. Like if someone tells me they want to lose 15 pounds and I'll say to them, okay, would you want to be able, would you want to have to eat half as many calories as you're eating now to maintain that? Or would you want to be able to eat more calories than you're eating now and be at that target? Now, most people would say, I want to be able to eat more calories. I'll say, okay, well, a big focus of your training then is going to be on slowing things down and getting your metabolism to speed up a little bit. Now, we might not be able to get you to eat more than you're eating now while losing 15 pounds, but I can definitely get you to eat more food than you would if we weren't making the metabolism boosting a goal. So you want to be very specific with your goal because that's also going to help you pick a program. Again, if your goal is build 15 pounds of muscle, you're not going to, you shouldn't be doing a program that's based on circuits and running. You know, that's more of an endurance type of a program. If your goal is to build 15 pounds of muscle, your routine should be more of a strength building type of routine. Right. If your goal is to burn body fat, well, I'm going to tell you this much when it comes to body fat loss, you can burn body fat on almost any program. Uh, a lot of that has to do with nutrition. So take that into account. Also take this into account. How long term do you want your goals? Um, here, here's something to consider. If a program is promising you all your results in 30 days or 60 days, probably not a long-term approach. Mm-hmm. Most long-term approaches are slow and steady. They help you build behaviors that support you know, your new physique. Um, and they also build your body up rather than break it down consistently. So knowing your goals and being specific with your goals is extremely important. I, I teach this to trainers all the time. I tell trainers, look, when you're asking your client what their goals are, get specific because you have to paint the picture. And, and it's more so and they it, can paint it for themselves. And I always have to remind clients that when you give me a goal right now, it doesn't mean like this. we can't change this in totally. two mm-hmm. months. Mm-hmm. What it does is it just gives me the direction of how your program should look over the next two months. So it's not saying that, uh, you know, I, I've had many clients who wanted to build 15 pounds of muscle. They also wanted to burn 10 pounds of fat and they also wanted to be a triathlete. They can, mm-hmm. and then they also wanted to be like a strong man. You could do all of those things, but when th- this is what's wrong with programming is nobody, nobody programs specifically for, cause each one of those are a specific adaptation and they, and each one of those goals should be addressed differently. Mm-hmm. And so what we would want to do is say, okay, Let's focus on one of those adaptations. What's one of those goals? Okay, let's focus on one of those goals at a time. 
work towards that, the program that we follow should be directed towards that, then as you see the progress in that direction, say it was, oh, now we've put on like 12 pounds. You're like, hey, man, Adam, I'm feeling great. We're almost to that 15 pounds already. You know, let's start now addressing my endurance. And I start moving that direction. So you want you want to be able to understand your goals, understand too that your goals should be specific just because you want to be going to the gym targeting that main adaptation. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't change. In fact, it should. It should. Yeah. It, I think too, like and to, to kind of bring it back to the beginning of like gathering information, I think that, you know, it, it is to your benefit to get more information in terms of your, your eating patterns. So tracking everything in terms of like how much sleep you're getting, how much activity you're getting, like the quality of your joints, go through a, go through an assessment. I highly suggest, even if you just like go into a gym and get a trainer to take you through an assessment, it's very valuable because you need somebody a lot of times to be able to see things you probably don't see in terms of your movement. Uh, and then this will also help you just be more effective and efficient in getting closer to your goal, even if it's just fat loss, well, because now you're building on a more uh, found like a, a solid foundation to go. Well, off. this is why we we uh, we develop Maps Prime. It's got a, yep. a self assessment tool in there that kind of gives you an idea of what exercises and correctional movements you want to start with. And this is important because, as, you know, uh, here's another good analogy. You know, if I had if I had two parallel lines traveling uh, and they were perfectly parallel, they'd be next to each other, whether it was one mile down the line or 15 miles down the line. But if I move one just a quarter of a degree to the left, the further down you move, the further apart those two lines become. And you go down a million miles and you see they're nowhere near each other. Well, the way you start your routine is kind of like that. If you start your program with bad movement patterns, you're not going to notice a whole lot initially in terms of lack of progress or maybe even pain. But as you continue down the line, the problems become bigger, 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 and the hurdles between you and progressing become larger and larger and larger. And so it's critical when you first start out a routine that you actually place an emphasis on you know, mobility and on movement patterns. That's actually the best time to work on those things. It's harder to fix it later on, in fact. The reality of that is this is probably one of the areas that most of my clients didn't know how to ask for, mm -hmm. but was something that you always integrated as a trainer, and this is where you really blew their mind. It's like, okay, you can want to build 15 pounds of muscle, or you can want to lose 10 pounds of fat, but along the way, I'm going to get you moving better and feeling better, and that's what always kept those people coming back. Always. Yeah. It didn't matter, even if we didn't reach their goal, even if they signed up with the the ambition of you know, Adam, I want to lose those 15 pounds. I hope we can do it in the course of the next two or three months. And along that way, we don't lose the 15 pounds, but I got them moving better and feeling better and like alleviating those aches and pains they had because we addressed the mobility issues or posture issues. Now, if this sounds complicated to you, um, you can get specific with mobility movements. And again, like we have a program, uh, Maps Prime, that uh, will, will give you an assessment. But if you just want to keep it general, okay, this means you have to be mobility minded. Just doing that is like a big piece of the puzzle. Just doing that. So what does that mean? Well, that means I'm starting out my workout. I'm going to the gym. Okay, today's my first leg workout. I'm going to work out my legs. Do not go in with the mentality of I'm going to go in and beat my legs up and get sore and and, and make them hurt. Don't do that. And I, and I know that sounds crazy because that's what everybody does, right? Well, what do you mean? That's what I'm going to the gym for. I'm going to the gym yeah. to work out and get sore. No, 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 no. Go in mobi mobility minded. Go in to train your legs, but practice the movements that you're doing for your legs in ways that means that you're going to get better at them. So, the difference between someone who's squatting who just wants to beat their legs up, be between them and the person who goes into squat who wants to improve their ability to squat is very different. Imagine that in your mind right now. What does that look like? The person who goes into squat just to beat up their legs, their form is secondary. It's really about how many reps they can do and how hard they can go. The person who goes in to focus on their movement, it looks like they're practicing squatting. It looks like they're trying to perfect the movement. They're using weight that isn't too heavy because if it's too heavy, your form goes out the window. And they're just getting better at squatting. They're getting yeah, better at the range. It's much more intentional. They're practicing. If you just do that, you don't even need an assessment tool. You don't need Maps Prime or anything like that. Now, of course, those things help and they make things a lot better and easier, but you don't need them. If you go in with the mobility mentality of practicing the exercises, that right there makes all the difference in the world, especially if you have a if your current fitness level is low. And it, this is even for people who are experienced, especially people who are experienced. You may know how to squat, you may know how to row, 
go in the gym and practice those lifts. And what will end up happening through that process of, of being mobility-minded is the level of intensity that you're using to practice the squat, that'll continue to maintain, but the weight will go up. So now, before I did uh, you know 105 pounds, and I'm really practicing my form, and I'm kind of tight, so I'm going light, and I'm being tense and getting really, really good technique and form. And then next week, same intensity, but now I'm 10 pounds heavier on my weight because I'm like, oh, I actually need a little bit more weight to maintain the same intensity I did last week. And you keep this up, and you know what that looks like? Amazing progress. It looks like amazing progress. You're getting better at the lift while simultaneously getting better movement and mobility. And you know what that translates into in terms of aesthetics, in terms of the way you look? A balanced-looking physique. Now, all of us know what an unbalanced-looking physique looks like. We've all seen the guy and the girl in the gym who are lean and muscular, but they just don't seem to be moving well. Their shoulders are kind of rounded forward. They look like muscle-bound meatheads. We all know what that looks like. Okay, if you train with mobility in mind and movement – You'll still develop, in fact, you'll probably develop more muscularity and get leaner faster because you're progressing more consistently, Yeah, you bring, but you'll look better. You bring this point up, and I know we address this uh, with squats and deadlifts and the big lifts all the time, but I this I, this is everything. Every lift. I used to do this with my trainers, and I, I, I'd watch them on the floor, and you know, and, and most of my trainers were good with with their clients, and when they, when they were squatting, they, they knew it was a very technical movement, so they were moving around and addressing points a lot. But if they were doing a bicep curl or a tricep push down or something like that, they were just kind of like that. Then they were working on their notes or just counting, right? And I'm like, dude, you need to make every movement that these this person do. I mean, I can take somebody in a bicep curl, and especially if you're just an average Jane or which Joe, is a super basic, yeah, super exercise. basic. But I would be walking around them. I'd be I would speak to them to their stance, to their shoulders, to them tucking their chin back, to drawing their core in, to I and and slowing down the negative. Like you can take a movement, even as simple as a bicep curl, mm-hmm. and just try and perfect it. And this was the type of habits that I would always try and instill in my clients when they were just getting Bro, started in their yeah. program because. You're going to build on that. You're you're laying the foundation, bro. This is like martial arts is like this. Like the mm-hmm. the best jujitsu schools in the world, the ones that have the, some of the best competitors, drill the basics and they drill them perfectly. I remember the first time I did, uh, I took a jujitsu class and I was taught by someone who was a direct uh, descendant of the Gracie family. And here we are. We're all relatively advanced. I was the lowest ranked person in the class. I had a purple belt and a purple belt takes you a good five, six years to get. So I was relatively experienced and they were teaching us a, a mounted front choke. Okay. So those of you in jujitsu know that's one of the first uh, submissions that you learn when you do jujitsu. And so we're all doing it, but the guy's walking around and he is picking apart every little part of the technique. Mm -hmm. And it made all the difference in the world. And it's funny because Hicks and Gracie's son competed uh, like five years ago in one of these huge tournaments. And he and this is he's he's we're talking high level. He's competing against some of the best guys in the world. He beat every everybody with a mounted front choke. It's like the most basic, <laughs> yeah. one of the most basic movements. Look at boxers. Boxers have four punches. They have four punches. Yet they're they're some of the most effective strikers in the world because they practice those four punches so often that they're perfect at them. And so what ends up happening when you train with mobility and technique in mind? Sure, you're not going to lift as much weight or go as intense as your buddy who's going you know, ham over there with the squat rack, but over time, you're going to get better and better and better, but your form is going to be perfect, and yeah. your body will reflect it. Imagine if you brought that into just your average workout, and like you had that mindset going into each exercise. One thing that I, I, I try and focus on, too, is just if you want to keep it really simple and you're going through that exercise and you are intentional about you know your mechanics and, and the way that you're lifting uh, the weight and what your body and keeping your body stabilized and, and in, in that position, once that starts to degrade, just barely, just stop. Stop. Mm-hmm. You know, just start... If you can start with that sort of intent where, um, you know, like I, I, I already can feel the fatigue setting in. I can already feel that uh, my arm wants to go out or something is kind of taking me away from how I started. If you just stop and then just rest a bit and then pick it back up and go again, it makes a world of difference. You're gonna, that's going to carry so many better patterns going into the future. Right, so when you're picking a workout, knowing this, when you're picking a workout, know your current fitness level and your experience and make sure there's a mobility component in the routine and make sure it's not designed in a way that kind of throw that, throws that out. Like 
if you see a routine and a lot of the workouts of these circuits and the circuits include extremely complex exercises. So a circuit is when you do exercise after exercise after exercise with no rest. You're just, and they're popular because they make people sweat and they're hard. And so people perceive them as being super effective. So you're looking at this routine, you're about to start your new workout and you're like, wow, okay. So I have to do jump squats, you know, jump lunges, push-ups, and dumbbell cleans or, or, or cleans with the barbell in a circuit. And you know those exercises are technical and difficult. Probably not a good workout for you. And to be quite honest with you, that workout isn't good for most people. So consider that when you're looking at picking the right routine. Understand that importance. Well, this is also why we always recommend two reps short of failure. It's not because there's not value in taking the body to failure sometimes. Is we just know that the average person listening that's going to exercise... The last two reps look like shit. Yes. <laughs> we know that once the body starts to fail, the form starts to go. And so it's inevitable those last two reps, even if you can get them are probably pretty shitty, and we know that creates bad habits, bad patterns, and that you don't want to risk that at the reward of just get, lifting mm -hmm. five more pounds or two more reps. I think of it like building a skyscraper, right? If there's two of us and we're racing to see who can build the tallest skyscraper, and there's one person who's spending all this time laying this incredible foundation. He spends weeks and weeks and weeks on laying it, and the other guy is just ramping up, and he's up, he's 40 feet in the air already, and the other guy's still laying the concrete down to make sure this foundation is really solid and perfect, and then there's nothing wrong with it. But this guy that's ahead by you know 40 feet right now, what's going to end up happening one year, two year down the road, you get warped. Yeah, exactly. And your body is the Leading same. Tower of Pisa. That's right. Your body is your body is the <laughs> like same that. the same way. Sure, you it might get you by right now. You may not notice the aches and pains. You may be seeing somewhat of results. So, oh, it's is it really that big of a deal? Like it is if you plan to do this long term. Mm -hmm. If you plan to keep building this skyscraper and building this physique, the foundation that you lay right now will make a difference down the road. So don't just be chasing the calories, reps, and weight. Totally. Now here's yeah. another big one, and this one's huge. A lot of people don't realize just how big this one is. You have to have a very honest conversation with yourself in terms of how many days a week you can commit realistically to working out. This has to be a real honest uh, question and answer that you have with yourself. Because a lot of times when we're motivated, we're like, yeah, you know what? I'm really motivated. I think I want to start working out. We give out crazy numbers. It's like I would ask people like, okay, how many days a week you want to work out? Five. Wait a minute. You were just telling me you're not doing anything yeah. and you want to go to five days a week. Is that realistic for you forever? That's what I want you to think about. Think to yourself, what is realistic for me forever? Now, here's why that, that's important. Okay, This is how consistency is built and how confidence is built. It's built through challenging yourself with something that's challenging and realistic. It has to be realistic because you have to accomplish it. Once you accomplish it, then you build the confidence to potentially add more. And this is how I've trained. This is how I train clients the back half of my career. Because the, the first half of my career was as many days as you can come, let's do it. The second half of my career was no, no, no. Let's start realistically. And what ended up happening was I got, had far more success. People would get honest with me and they'd start out by saying, oh, I want to work out four days a week. And I'd be like, okay, is that realistic for you forever? Let's have a real conversation. Then they'd look at me and be like, well, forever? And I'd be like, okay, uh, I think two days a week. It's like, okay, so two days a week, you know for sure you can commit to working out for the rest of your life consistently. And they'll say, yes, no problem. Here's what ends up happening. They come do two days a week. It's challenging because they were honest with themselves. So it is challenging, but we make it. We make it more often than not. They make it to the gym two days a week. You know what ends up happening after a little while? They come three days a week. Mm -hmm. And then they do that consistently. And it's challenging. It's hard. I added an extra day a week, but I'm doing that consistently. And then you know what happens after a while? They come four days a week. This is how I've gotten- You can the, build off of it. Always. And it's the, it's, this is the, the road to success. So the first workout you pick- because you know workouts are designed and they tell you how many days a week you're going to be in the gym. Don't do this. Here's what a lot of people do. They think, I really want to get in shape really bad. I want to do, get, get this results real quick. So then they look at the routine like, okay, this one's six days a week. It's going to be the best one. Six days a week for sure. Is he going to get me there right, faster? Right. Wrong way to look at it. Right. That's it, actually the, the opposite. Right. Way you it, it's I'll, almost like you know if you're – if you find yourself having to go look for all these motivational quotes and motivational people doing crazy shit just to get you to the gym, yeah. you should really assess whether, you know, whether or not that's the right plan for you. Because you have to ramp yourself up to that high of a level. You haven't really built yourself in that direction. Like There's steps to this. I almost always subtracted a day 
out of whatever anyone said. Yes. So if you told me, yes. Adam, I can go seven days a week. I'm like, okay, well, we're definitely not starting anything beyond six. You know, yes. if, oh, Adam, I'm going to do four days a week or three days a week. I always would subtract one and say, listen, we can get to four. That'd be great. But let's prove to me that you can be consistent with this first because almost everybody, when they go into the gym, they get their membership, they hire their trainer or whatever, or get started. Is You're on your high. You just read your favorite influencer's motivational quote, like Justin said. You're pumped up. She's changing her life. I'm going to change my life. You get down to the gym. You're pumped up. I'm going to do everything I can. And at that time, at that moment, you're thinking you're going to do everything you can. But in reality, to Sal's point, the likelihood that you're going to keep up that consistency is low. So start off with something that's obtainable, then you can always build on it. That's a 100%, 100% uh, path to failure. I'm going to tell you this right now. I mean, there's there's two ways, there's two general ways that people make significant changes in their life. Now, one way, which is the more rare way, way of, of, of making changes, is the epiphany. It's that epiphany where you wake up one morning, something tragic happened or something impactful happened, and you're different forever. So it's like it's like the alcoholic who just can't stop drinking alcohol and then gets in a car accident and almost kills another driver. That may be enough to give him that epiphany to stop. But usually things don't happen that way. The way that we make changes usually is one step at a time, and then they become the small steps become bigger steps. So when you're looking for the right program for you, don't say to yourself, what's the most I can do because I want to get this goal real bad. Say to yourself, what is a consistent amount of times I can dedicate to exercise forever, starting right now? What is realistic that I can do forever? And for most of you listening right now, especially if you're new to working out, you are looking at two to three days a week. That is generally what I see. Some of you may even be one day a week, but generally about two or three days a week. This, this also speaks to compliance and enjoyment. Totally. I mean, I mean part of what will keep you consistent isn't just your motivation currently at your wanting to get to your goals, but also do you enjoy this workout? You know, is this so, and this is what we sometimes we talk about, you know, poor program design or, you know, exercise programs that we see out there. And it's like even as shitty as some of them are out there, if it's something that you'll do consistently, it's better than something that you will do inconsistently, a superior program. Mm -hmm. Right. So if so. If you're, if it's a program that you enjoy, you like doing it, and you can be consistent with it, that is important, and it's important that you assess that before you just do it or commit to it. Because if you commit to something that someone sold you on, this is the best thing for you, but you hate every minute of it, the likelihood of you continuing that, continuing that for a long term is very, very. Oh, long. so so true. I used to make that point with clients because they would tell me, "Hey, I, I heard that you know running burns the most calories. Maybe I should just, I should just run." Um, and I'd say, well, do you like running? Like, no, I can't stand running. I'd say, well, pick something you enjoy doing. Like, you know, what do you like doing? Oh, I like to ballroom dance. Ballroom dancing classes are my favorite. Okay, well, those burn 30% less calories, but you know what they burn more calories than? The one you're not going to do. So you could sign up for running and it turns into zero because you end up not doing it. Mm. Or you could go do th the thing you love, which turns into consistency. What's funny, it's funny when we used to get those, uh, you know, I used to use body bugs or these calorie counting devices that, uh, and, and they're relatively accurate where you could put it on. It'll tell you how many calories you're burning throughout the day. And I'd have clients who would burn more calories on the weekends than they did during the week when they actually had their workouts. Oh, that was so enlightening for my clients. Oh, totally. And, I, and you know why? Why, why did I, Wow, you burned way more calories on Saturday than you do on Friday when you work out for, out, for an hour. What did you do Saturday? Oh, well, you know, I was at the mall with my friends and we did all this shopping. And then after that, I went Came to home, painted my house. Yeah, I went to the beach and oh my God, we had so much fun. And I'm like, do you, do you see what's going on here? You enjoyed yourself and you burned way more calories than your structured workouts. So it, you got to enjoy what you're doing. Now, what makes something enjoyable? Well, partly it's the activity itself. So you can enjoy something just for the sake of doing it. Like I love with lifting weights, even if I wasn't getting stronger, it's just a fun thing for me. The other thing is results. Uh, in progress? Are you consistently progressing uh, in some way? Like it doesn't have to be weight loss or muscle gain, but it could be just feeling better, learning new things, just improving. That's a big one when it comes to the enjoyment of a routine. So consider that. Consider yourself. Look at the routine and say, okay, I know this one's more effective, but this one has me doing boot camp classes at 5 a.m. Uh, and I fucking, I hate waking up <laughs> at 5 a.m. and I don't like someone yelling at me, but it's way more effective than the you know, Zumba class I do with my girlfriends, that seems to be way more fun or whatever. 
pick the one you know you're going to do. Start there. Th- this is one of the knocks that I would have too on the the group classes. And I know they do the group classes do a really good job of building community. So that's their saving grace. Mm-hmm. Their saving grace is that there's this kind of accountability like and, and CrossFit's notorious for this. They're great at building community and like, you know, you know, you know, Susie takes the 5 a.m. CrossFit class every day and you're going to see her and she's going to, if you're not there, she's going to text you. And so there's that extra motivation to get there. So that helps. But man, that, that type of training, that high of level of intensity, every single workout all the time is really fucking tough for the average person to bring that day in, day out. It'll kill your compliance. It, it does. Most, yeah. very few people have that level of- What a great point. Uh, of motivation to bring that every day, day, what they do. And what I guarantee many people listening right now, even those that probably love those group classes and CrossFit and shit like that, is they go in waves. Mm-hmm. When they're when they are highly motivated and they're consistent, they are for three months or six months at a time, and then they fall off, and then they are back on. And when they're on, they feel great because they're in good shape to them. But you you would be way better off if you you did something that was way less intense, but did it more consistently and more frequently, and you enjoyed it, and you stayed, and you created more of a behavior that's like it's not so daunting to go that's, to the gym. That, yeah, and to boil that down, um, how does your workout make you feel afterwards? Mm. Do you feel beat up, or do you feel energized? Because a workout that beats you up might be fun at first when you're highly motivated, especially if you're hating your body and you're like, I want to beat the crap out of myself. But after a while, being beat up after a workout will destroy your motivation. It Both physically, because you'll see the studies will show, beating the crap out of yourself, dopamine will start to drop because your body's literally sending you signals that says, don't, please don't do this to me anymore. Yeah. Like, this is too yeah. much. So if, if you, after your workout, you're like, man, I got to go home and sit on the couch for two hours. Like, I am just taxed. I'm telling you right now, that is not a long-term, in terms of compliance routine. But if you leave your routine, you're like, you know what? I do my workout and then I come home and I'm talkative with my family, I'm energetic, I feel really good, that is something that probably has some staying power. That's something that's going to help you maintain your consistency with your workouts. And consistency when it, with activity is one of the most important I things. I think that's the biggest repulsion uh, from people really even starting and getting into fitness. Like It's the biggest barrier is that it just looks like work. Yeah. And, and that's all that, you know, people... <clears throat> I've I've had the hardest time with with getting certain family members and certain friends and people to realize like it doesn't ha- you don't have to experience it like that. You can just you can go with and lead with something that you actually enjoy doing but also then build upon that. And so this is this is part of the process of of gaining that motivation. Mm-hmm. You don't even if you don't have the motivation now, you got to find a way to actually start to spark it. Here's another one too, uh, the amount of time you can dedicate to working out. So not just the days per week, but the time for the actual workout itself. Now, why is this important? Okay. Here's why I think this is real important. People tend to think that the less time that they have, the more intense and harder their workout needs to be. So people may come to the gym and be like, I got 45 minutes in the gym, so I want to make it count. Therefore, I can't do anything that's slow or recuperative. I got to beat the crap out of myself. I only have 45 minutes. Now, part of the blame goes to the fitness industry. The fitness industry is trying to sell you short and short workouts that don't require much time. And then the way that they sell it to you is by saying, 30 minutes will kick your ass. Trust me, it'll do everything you need. You won't need to do anything else. I was part of the problem as a trainer early on. I remember people telling me, I, I can't get a whole, are you sure I can do a whole workout in 30 minutes? And then my goal was to show them they, could, they couldn't make it past 30 minutes. You know what I mean? I'd beat them up so bad that they'd leave and then, then they'd come back like, you're right, 30 minutes is plenty of time. That's not what you need to look at. The time that you're going to go to the gym or, or work out, that's just going to help you know what to prioritize in your workout. But in terms of intensity, the same thing that we said earlier in this episode about your experience and fitness level is just as true whether you have 30 minutes to work out or you have 90 minutes to work out. That's the intensity. It needs to be appropriate. It needs to be appropriate to your fitness level and your experience. It doesn't need to change just because you're working out you know, less time. Don't go in there and beat the crap out of yourself because you only have 30 minutes. It just means you need to prioritize things a little bit differently. So if I'm going to the gym and I'm only spending 30 minutes, I'm going to make sure I do my big gross motor movements that give me the best bang for my buck. For sure, I'm going to go and do my squat. For sure, I'm going to go and do my overhead press. For sure, I'm going to do some rows. I'm going to do those first. I'm going to leave all the small exercises for if I have time to squeeze out 
of this short period of time. I wish that I would document one of these times where my training volume is really low and I'm getting back in the swing of things so people could see what we're talking about. It's just so goddamn boring. I would never waste paying one of our employees to follow me around to do this <laughs> <laughs> because it really is this simple. It's like, you know, for the first couple of weeks of getting back in the swing of things, a, a workout may be 20, 30 minutes for me and it may literally be one exercise. I may squat for 20 minutes mm -hmm. and that's, that's a workout. I'm good. You know why? Because I hadn't squatted in two months, anything like that. So me just going for 20 minutes and working on my squat, four sets of that, man, I'm going to be, I'll probably be plenty sore, probably more than I even need, depending on how much weight I put on my back. So, you know, when, when you, when you eat, when you only have 20 minutes, especially when you're just getting started and that's your time frame. The, one of the biggest mistakes that someone can make is, to your point, Sal, is just throwing a whole circuit of exercises. Like, no, you could literally spend the all 20 minutes, again, still to the point we made earlier, perfecting the movement on the squat. And the benefit that you'll get from that will way outweigh the 12 exercises that you did back to back to back to back, back in your circuit. So keep that in mind. And even somebody at an advanced level, like I would consider myself, you know, if I haven't been training that much, that a, mm -hmm. the workout would look like that. It would scale up to where I was adding things on top of the squat. So totally. again, starting off with just the, the basics and building on top of that. All right, so now let's talk about one final one. I think we covered most of them, but uh, equipment. Mm. What access to equipment do you have? Um, obviously, if you love boxing and that's the way you want to work out, well, you better have gloves and a heavy bag and maybe someone to hold mitts for you. Um, it, you know, do you have access to a gym? A gym obviously is going to provide you with a lot of variety of cardio equipment, a variety of machines and free weights, and there may even be some group exercise classes. Um, and this goes back to the whole realistic thing. Like, okay, I can, I can only dedicate, you know, three days a week in the gym realistically long term. All right, let's look at your schedule. Do you have time to go to a gym? Do you have time to get dressed, go to a gym, do your workout? And I'm talking realistically right now. And a lot of people might say no. Like, well, actually, no. Like, I know what my schedule looks like, and I know my motivation level. I think I'll start out working out at home. That's perfectly fine. Then your routine needs to be designed around the access of equipment that you have. And again, make it realistic. A lot of people just starting out are probably better off starting out with a, a workout that doesn't require a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. unless, you're, unless you know you're going to go to the gym, it's convenient. For a lot of people, just doing it at home You'll get plenty of results to get started. And then again, of course, as you're consistent and your motivation goes up and it becomes more of a long-term behavior, then you can add more and more variety. But you could do a whole workout with no equipment. You could do a whole workout with suspension trainer, which is a very inexpensive piece of equipment that you could attach to pretty much any overhang or whatever. You could have a pair of dumbbells and a physio ball, also very inexpensive. You could probably buy, you know, adjustable dumbbells on Amazon for under seventy dollars that have a wide range of weights that you can add to them. And a physio ball is another what thirty bucks. And now you have a home gym that you could do your workout. And then if you could take it another level, you could do a home, a full home gym with a squat rack. Like PRX makes phenomenal equipment. That would be something you could do. You have a squat rack, a barbell, dumbbells. My garage. Now remember, I've been working out for decades and have been training people for decades and I'm always pretty consistent. I work out in my garage most of the time and I have a squat rack, barbell, dumbbells, adjustable bench. That's all I have in my garage and that's what I use till this day for all of my advanced work. Sometimes that's a better route, especially for your your beginner because what ha happens sometimes with a big commercial gym and a new a newbie. The analysis by paralysis. Yes, <laughs> it, it, exactly. Is the paralysis by analysis. They're over here, they're staring at all the different equipment and they're like, fuck, where do I go, what do I do? Or... I said it backwards. Or they're like, <laughs> Jim quicken us. I said, yeah. <laughs> I <did. laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Mind blown. Or they get into this, they want to test drive everything. Yeah. You know, so your your workout. I mean, I, I you guys, you ever get? Clients I used to do this. Oh, yeah. kid. I used to get clients like this like, that would be like, that? I want to learn every machine in here. I want to yeah. learn every machine in here. So you know, some people Let's do that on the day you're not working. Out. Right, right. People <laughs> want to just know how to use everything in the gym, and I get that because if I was a, a member and I belong to a gym and I don't know how to use equipment, I had a trainer. I would probably use my personal trainer to at least learn all the equipment. Mm -hmm. But what ends up happening is you end up you, you you go around to all these machines, you find a few machines that you like or feel good or give you your pump in your arms the way you like, and then all of a sudden you're doing that machine all yeah, the time. Yeah. So be careful of that, of all the cool toys inside of a gym, because sometimes 
those exercises, as cool as they may seem or how neat the machine is, you're missing out on some of the, the fundamental and the most yes. important movements, which all that requires you have is a fucking barbell or a set of dumbbells. Yeah, I like uh, that approach of starting at the home, too, because there's that that sort of uh, insecurity where, you know, if you're brand new and you're going into a gym like that, it can be very intimidating and also feel like you sort of project this on everybody else. Like people are like watching and judging you. And, uh, you know, so whatever you, you're doing, you're very like self-conscious about. And to be able to really like practice and, and just hone in on it, like a select few movements, you know, in the own comfort of your house. I, I think that that's, I mean, that's a great approach, especially if you're a brand new that's, to fitness. That's my favorite thing, man. I love working at home. But all right. So I want to make sure that we, cause we, we covered, like seven steps that help you pick uh, your the best workout, but I want to give I want to leave people with some constructive takeaways. So here's some takeaways for you. If you just listen to this part of the episode, you'll have kind of a good idea in terms of what a routine should look like uh, for you. So step number one, the most important and foundational form of exercise that everybody should include. So if you only could pick one form of exercise. Make it this one, but it's not the only one I think you should pick. So I think everybody should incorporate a wide variety of modalities in the routine, but this should be the cornerstone, and that's resistance training. Now, here's why. Resistance training builds strength, stability, mobility. It helps speed the metabolism up, and it's extremely versatile, and it benefits all other physical pursuits, whether it be functional flexibility or endurance or stability or fat loss or body sculpting. So at the very least... You want to at least dedicate one day a week of resistance training. So if you can only work out one day a week, make it resistance training. Now, if you can work out more than one day a week, uh, I'd say up to three days a week, do at least a full body resistance training routine one to three of those days a week. If your goal is endurance and you love yoga classes or whatever, that's perfectly fine. The other one or two days a week can be dedicated to those form of exercises, but make sure that one day a week it's lifting weights. Now, if your goal is to build muscle, sculpt the body, get lean, and you like lifting weights, every one of those days can be resistance training. And here's what I'll say to that. Train your whole body. If you can work out three days a week or less, each one of those workouts should be a full body routine. And it should start like this. Work your legs first, because that's the biggest body part. Then move to your back. Then move to your chest. Then move to your shoulders, your arms. Then train your core. And then you can train things like your calves. So try to move in that order. Now, it doesn't need to be set in stone. But generally speaking, you want to do one, maybe two exercises per part of per body part. Now, if you have short time, then just do your legs, the back, chest, and shoulders. And you can stay away from the other ones because they get a lot of work from working those other body parts. And that'll cover some of the best exercises you could do. Now, if you work out more than that, if you're like, hey, I know I can be consistent four or five days a week, or you're advanced and you want to go a lot, then you can start splitting up the body if you want to. You don't necessarily have to do that. I don't do that, and I work out quite a bit. But that's when you can start splitting things up. So if you're going to the gym five or six days a week, maybe you do upper body on one day, lower body another day. One day is just mobility or just sprints or just yoga. Another day is an upper body day again, but this time now you're doing different types of exercises. Here's where you can mix it up a little bit. Here's where you can mix up all the types of routines and exercises. Now, as far as rep ranges are concerned, all rep ranges up to about 30 reps, I would say, generally speaking, have a lot of value. All rep ranges have a lot of value. I recommend, we recommend that you stay in one rep range for at least three weeks or so, anywhere between, I'd say, two to four weeks. Stay in that rep range, get good at that rep range. After about two to four weeks, move out of it so that your body can continue to adapt and change. As far as exercises are concerned, you can change up exercises relatively frequently only if you've mastered them. So what does that mean? It means you're probably not going to stop doing barbell squats, deadlifts, and overhead presses for a long time. Or ever. Or maybe ever. Right. Those exercises take a very, very long time to master, so they probably are going to be in your routine in your rotation consistently for a very, very long time. But like a dumbbell curl, okay, you get good at it, you could switch that out for a machine curl or a cable curl. Not a big deal, okay? So look at those things in that way. Now, in terms of goals, if your goal is endurance, then your routine should be centered around building endurance. If your goal is strength, it should be centered around strength. If your goal is mixed, pick one and make that the center focus, but then add the, it's almost like majoring and minoring in college, right? You're going to major in strength, but you're going to minor in endurance. Fine. You're in the gym three days a week. 
If my major is strength and my minor is endurance, two days a week are dedicated to strength. One day a week will be dedicated to endurance. If it's the reverse, then you flip it around. Now, if you're still confused, if this is still kind of like, wow, you know, great information, still not sure what this is going to look like for me. Well, here's what buying a program can really come in handy because it's all written out and, and, and planned out for you. Now, we have a lot of programs, so I don't want to necessarily go th through every single one, but I'll tell you this much. If you're super beginner, no experience, low experience, super beginner, MAPS Starter was designed specifically for beginners. It requires dumbbells and a physio ball or MAPS Anywhere, which is no equipment at all and it's mainly body weight and resistance bands. If you're uh, it's got some experience, um, but you're, you haven't been in the gym much, or you've got experience, you've only been working out for six months or so, MAPS Anabolic, great program, but it assumes you know how to do a barbell squat, barbell bench press, barbell row, that kind of stuff. If you want to get more advanced, then you have things like MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Split. For people who like the endurance, the stamina, the different kind of workouts, that would be more like MAPS Performance, maybe even MAPS Strong. Strong. And then we talked about correctional exercise and mobility. Here's something you can do with any workout. You could do MAPS Prime, and that will teach you how to do correctional exercise, and then you can add it to whatever you're doing. So if you're listening right now and you're like, you know what? They make good points. I love swimming. It's my favorite thing in the world to do. I really hate any other form of exercise. They told me to do what I love. Well, then MAPS Prime will teach you how to do a 10- to 15-minute priming session before you swim so that you get good movement patterns and you have good mobility. So that kind of simplifies it for you. But I think we gave you enough information in this episode itself to kind of get started and, and, and make this happen. And also check out our free guides. We have free guides that kind of spell this out and put it out all in writing for you. You can find those at mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.